Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we're going to be reading True Creepy Encounter Horror Stories. I hope you enjoy them. So without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. This story happened about a year ago, but it still creeps me out when I think about it. That being said, it's a little lengthy, but I think it fits here. I'm an adult male with a tall build at about 250 pounds who lives with my dog. My neighborhood is considered one of the nicer ones in my city, but it isn't without its share of crime incidents. Most of these tend to be car break-ins, where people are looking for easy grabs left in plain sight and, in the worst cases, the rare robbery of college students, not from the area, or people walking around who are otherwise not paying attention to their surroundings. Growing up, I lived in a much rougher part of the city, so being alert and observant of one's surroundings has always been second nature to me, especially at night, so much so that when my dog and I go for his nightly walk, he knows that it's all about the business of doing his business and doing it quickly with no dilly-dallying. On this particular night, I was running late with a work project that had to be completed on time, and our walk was delayed about an hour past our regular time to 10 p.m. I absolutely hate going out too late, already feeling anxious about missing our regular time when other dog owners are out doing the same. Something told me to make sure that I carry this time. So after I got my dog in his harness and out the door, we started our usual walk up the street, moving at a brisk pace. At this hour, the street is completely empty of pedestrians or car traffic, just eerily quiet. We get about halfway up the street before he starts sniffing around for a good area, when I spot a red pickup truck flying down the street well over the speed limit. The truck eventually comes to a screeching halt in the middle of the street, about 30 feet ahead of us. As soon as he hit his brakes, I quickly walked us a little further up as to put a row of the sporadically spaced parked cars on the street in between us and continue walking while maintaining eyes on the truck. As we walk by, the door opens and a guy gets out and is bent over coughing profusely, like a lot, and hacking up spit and whatnot in the middle of the street while holding on to the inside of his truck door with tinted windows. My dog and I both keep eyes on the guy as we're walking past about 25 feet distance from him. He then looks up at me while still keeping one arm inside the car door and says, hey, can you come here for a second? Without breaking stride, I said, yeah, probably not going to do that, while rotating my body and walking backward as we pass him as to not turn my back to him. While still backing away on our path, I ask him what's wrong. He then says, I'm not feeling well. Can you please just come over here? While still backing away, I tell him no plainly, and that he can pull into any of the parking spaces on his side of the street and rest there until he feels better, or that I can call him an ambulance if he's really that bad off. Upon hearing this, his face contorted and went into a snarl. He was also suddenly no longer having coughing fits or under any sort of visible physical distress. Clearly angry that I wouldn't cooperate, he then slightly closes the door a little so that it's still ajar but his arm that was behind it is concealed behind his back now, and he started towards us saying, please come here, sir. I told you that I'm not feeling well. <sighs> I then clip my dog's leash to my belt and get parallel against the side of a large SUV parked on my side of the street, leaving about 20 feet between us. I also move my hand behind my back to my waistband and tell him that's close enough from behind the vehicle. He then stares at me, and I can literally see him working the math in his head on the chances of me bluffing. And he turns around and goes back to the truck, but doesn't leave. He reaches inside with the concealed hand and holds for about 10 seconds before he looks back at me over his shoulder and stares for 10 more seconds, only to see that I am staring at him also. Haven't left my position next to the buffer vehicle, nor turned my back to him. 
he says something to someone else in the passenger seat who is obscured by the tent and then very quickly hops in, slams the door, and speeds back off up the street into the night. So this happened to my mom maybe three years ago. My mom has now passed away, but she was maybe 40 at the time. She was a very pretty woman, looked young for her age. She often had total strangers propose to her. Everyone was pretty much obsessed with her. That being said, she was no stranger to dealing with creeps. So one day she was at Woodman's, a grocery store for those of you who don't know. It wasn't really in a bad area, but was close to a bad area and was right off the freeway, so it could be kind of sketchy. She always told me that she didn't want to be going there alone, especially at night. When I would go with her at night, I was not to leave her side, even though I was 18 to 20 years old at the time. So anyway, she was there during the day doing her grocery shopping alone. She noticed a man in the same aisle as her. He was looking at her and when she would turn around and look at him, he would look away and act like he was looking at something on the shelves. Honestly, she didn't think much of it. As I mentioned, she dealt with her fair share of creeps. So she grabbed what she needed and moved on to another aisle. That's when she noticed him again, in the same aisle as her, doing the same thing. This time, it kind of rubbed her the wrong way, but she went about her business again and moved on. The man kept following her throughout the store. Now it's worth mentioning that my mom was not one to be messed with. She was very confrontational, never backed away from a fight, has beaten the crap out of men, taken beatings from men, usually carried a weapon, etc. So she's getting ready to check out and he's still following her. Now she's pretty angry and didn't feel safe leaving. She alerted an employee who went to get a manager. My mom took this opportunity to tell him off, saying something like, can I help you? What the heck do you want? He replied to her saying, you look like the kind of girl who would really look good in someone's basement. At this point, she was not only mad, but absolutely terrified. The manager came, and while my mom was telling them about the guy and what he had said, he ran off. The police were called, and they were able to locate him in or around the building. They escorted him off the property, but that was all. My mom was so afraid that the guy was lurking somewhere, waiting to see her get into her car, and then proceed to follow her. She ended up calling me in tears, saying she was afraid, and if she was going to be followed or abducted, she wanted someone to know. So she and I stayed on the phone till she was home. It took a lot to shake or scare my mom, but she had really good intuition. So for her to be as shaken as she was, this guy had to be as creepy as they come. His comment to her only proved that further. In the end, she was okay. But I can't imagine what would have happened if she didn't tell someone or if he did wait for her and follow her. This happened to me and my still current boyfriend about two years ago. We live in a city that has a main downtown area. The main city is pretty liberal, but once you get out into the county, it can become very quite the opposite. That being said, the main city and especially the downtown area has a pretty bad homeless problem. That's only gotten worse over the years. For the most part, the homeless population is pretty harmless. They know the good spots to hang out. A lot of times they just smile at you and I always smile back and you go on your way. Sadly, there's been an increase of incidents, infer what you will, in the last few years with the rise of overdoses and more addictive street drugs. I was living in the main downtown area at the time, having just recently graduated college and wanting to be close to the nightlife. My best friend that I met in college and I were roommates. We had an apartment right in the middle of downtown. It was the perfect setup. 
My boyfriend, let's call him Jack, happened to live one block down, then about five or six blocks south of that. It was about a 10 minute walk, give or take. It was even closer to the heart of downtown as well. So you can imagine how convenient that made it for hanging out and also not having to take a car and worry about parking. One overcast Sunday morning, my boyfriend and I woke up at my place and decided to walk over to his so that he could grab some things. We had walked the majority of the way. It really was just a straight walk on sidewalks the whole time. We were on the right side of the road with the street to our left. We're not one minute away from my boyfriend's place when I notice something ahead that makes me feel a bit uneasy. First off, there's a guy walking in front of us in the same direction we are with his back to us. I can see that he has both earbuds in. He's walking at about the same pace, so we aren't about to run into him or anything. In front of him, facing and walking towards all of us is a different guy. He had a small frame, was maybe five foot eight, wearing dark pants, a red sweatshirt with a hood up, and a backpack. Even though his hood was up, I could see his face. Some short black hair poked out, pale skin, and these black, beady, crazy eyes that I'll never forget. I assumed him to be homeless, as it was an area that was popular for them. Now, he wasn't looking at us, but rather the pedestrian with earbuds in who happened to be closer to him and in front of us. All of a sudden, I see the homeless guy run and quite literally rush the pedestrian in front of us, like ran up and then stopped about a half foot from this poor dude's face. Since the guy had his headphones in, he probably just wanted to mind his own business and walk home quietly. He was clearly taken by surprise and stopped and took one of the earbuds out to see what the crazy dude wanted. Me, while I'm a risk taker, I didn't like putting myself in the wrong situation when I didn't need to be. This freaked me out, and I didn't want the guy to notice us and come up at us next. So I stepped left of the sidewalk into the street. There was a pretty big lane for street parking, and it was lined with parked cars, so I conveniently hid myself from behind view of a car. As I continued walking, I heard this guy start yelling obscenities at the poor pedestrian. Things like, I'm going to run you over with a car. I'm going to find you. Like I said, we were not 100 feet from the entrance to my boyfriend's apartment at this point. And after witnessing that, I just wanted to be inside. My boyfriend had continued walking on the sidewalk. And in an instant, I had come back in view. And we turned right towards the apartment. Now, the apartment did have a main entrance from the street side on the sidewalk but my boyfriend just moved in and didn't have the code for the front door yet. All he had was his fob to the parking garage that led to the stairwell up into the place. We were using that at the time to get in. We walked up to the parking garage door and clicked the button so it would start rolling up. I hadn't looked behind me at this point. I knew I probably should have, but a lot of times if you ignore the crazy people, for lack of better words, they will turn in and not bother you. So I was kind of following that tactic at the moment. The garage door was open and we went inside. My boyfriend clicked the button to close it. We started the short walk to the door to the stairwell. The garage door was nearly closed and I don't know what prompted me to look back, but I did. And what I saw still gives me chills today. It was the homeless guy from the street. He was squeezing under the garage door while he still could. I remember the chill that ran down my spine as I locked eyes with his, and I yelled at my boyfriend, Jack, he's following us. I'm not sure what I expected my boyfriend to do, but he pushed the door to the stairwell open and started running. That was his oh crap moment when I realized this guy had access inside, because the door to the stairwell didn't require a fob or even have a lock. Me, definitely not wanting to be the closest one to this guy, took off running after my boyfriend. As I pushed the door open and got inside, I could hear the guy behind me doing the same as it was swinging back closed. I looked back and locked eyes with this crazy guy once again and about crapped myself as I realized my only option was to keep running and try to get inside our apartment and close the door before he got there. Yes, this guy was smaller, but what really freaked me out is since he had a backpack, I had no idea if he had a knife or gun in there. I mean, why else would you chase two people and outnumber yourself? My boyfriend lived on the third floor, of course, so we proceeded to sprint up three flights of stairs. 
I could hear this guy's pounding footsteps behind me. At last, we got to our level and opened the door to the hallways and sprinted to his unit without looking back, unlocked that door as fast as we could, still felt slower than heck to this day, and slammed the door shut behind us. I remember looking through the peephole and expecting to see this guy standing there ready to yell at us, but nothing. My heart was pounding. I mean, what the heck just happened? We called the cops and told them what happened to us. I'll admit, they probably did all they could, but it didn't feel like enough. I was freaked out. This dude now had access to and was inside the building with access to all the apartments and residents. I just imagined him hiding in the stairwell for the next poor soul. Well, the cops came, drove around the perimeter of the complex for a few minutes, weren't able to search the inside of the building because apparently they didn't have access in, and for some reason we weren't allowed to let them in, and left after not finding anyone. It took forever to finally get the urge to leave that apartment to go to run our Sunday errands, but we did. I'm sure the guy was just high on drugs and decided to be crazy that morning and bother some unlucky people. He probably left after he realized he was screwed if people found him there, and someone else called the cops. I made this account to post here. Anyways, this happened around like 2021, and sometimes I still find it hard to grasp. For context, I now live in a different place, and along with most of my relatives, so I feel safer saying this on here. The reason I'm posting this is for people to learn and possibly caution themselves from my experience. I'd say the place I lived in was just pretty old. It wasn't densely populated nor empty. It had wooded areas around it. You could cycle to the mall, school, and other normal places, but you'd have to take a car to go to places like a hospital. I was basically in my last year of high school. Being an only child and a girl on top of that made my parents very overprotective, and I was naturally more cautious than the rest of my friend group. I didn't really mind being that way, though because I always thought that that was the better option. So, teenagers from school would have these outdoor get-togethers in the woods a few kilometers away from my school. It was just common for people to lounge out and about, chilling till 3 a.m. or something like that. Including me, it was a group of four. They decided since it was our last year, we should probably drink together in the woods. Obviously, looking back, it was a really stupid idea, but it wasn't unsafe and it wasn't deep in the woods either. There's a pretty clear trail and a small openish area where people would get their dogs and whatnot like that. We planned to do it on a Thursday because my parents would be out and the rest would convince theirs that they were having a sleepover. Now, we had bought the alcohol and some other stuff to just chill out. There were no others that day because it was a weekday and quite chilly as well. It was pretty lively. You could see houses from the distance, and people would be driving around and all, so naturally we felt safer. We walked on the trail for about a minute when I felt uneasy. I felt like we were being watched or something like that, and looked over to one of my friends. She looked a little distressed, but we just shrugged it off. We walked only a few minutes more and found our spot. We started drinking, and basically spent like an hour and approximately 30 minutes of gossiping and having those deep talks while being drunk. I didn't drink too much and neither did my other friend. We were just a little tipsy. Now we forgot about the brief weird feeling we had while walking until we heard something from the thick trees in front of us. Even though we were loud, we all heard it. It was this weird snicker slash giggle. I got up from this tree log that I was setting on and just dragged my friends back a little. We had a fire going and two torches but we still couldn't really see into that area. It wasn't that close to us. Think around four doors away if you place them horizontally. So the fact that we heard that laugh was just insane to me. I pointed the flash straight into the area and no one came out. I sat back down and when I turned the flashlight off, there was a silhouette coming out. I switched on the flash to blind that person while my other friends did the same. 
We started yelling and getting ready to run when I saw the most horrifying sight of my life. It was this man who we'd never seen before. He had this plaster smile and his hair was covered in dirt. He was pale and his eyes were almost like he wasn't looking at us, but just in our general direction. I can't explain it, but just textbook creepy. We all ran for it. My very drunk friends even managed to snap out of it. We got to my house. I lived the closest to the place and said that we'd call the cops. We were really scared of our parents, but it didn't matter. We called the cops. They found nothing. Word got out and people pretty much strayed away from the paths at nighttime. And a couple of guys in our school managed to get their dads and all with guns to find the guy. But nothing ever came of it. Fast forward to like a month later. We didn't talk about it much and never did anything like that again. I got a pocket knife and pepper spray to keep. I went home after school and was exhausted, so I decided to take a nap. My dad was at work and my mom was visiting her sister. I suddenly woke up to this weird sound. We had one story and the walls were not too thick. I locked all the doors and even the windows out of habit. Still, fearing for the worst, I locked my room door and kind of looked out my window. There was nothing. I grabbed at a bat in my phone, heading out of my room. I looked at all the doors and everything was locked. There was this weird like shuffling out of my house and I just looked through the window of my living room. I kid you not, it was the same dude from the woods. He was just outside walking in this erratic, eerie way, which just sent me into a spiral. He somehow saw me and started saying hi there very loudly. I called the police, and after that I told him to leave. After that he started saying my name and all of my friends' names. The police questioned him. He had no history of mental illness. He had no clinical disorder and after enough torture, he confessed to liking young women. He's in jail now. He'll probably get out in a couple of years. Edit. By torture, I meant interrogation. My dad has a friend who's a cop, and the cop told him the guy would scream when they asked him things. He was also guilty of attempted SA and harassment. But that is all I know of. Am I overreacting to a creepy co-worker? I spoke with my husband and other co-worker. They have differing opinions. I started working at my job a few months ago, and up until recently I hadn't seen this co-worker who we'll call Twinkle Toes. He walks on his toes. Turns out, he was asked to work from home for the first few months I have been there, so he just came back to the office full time. He started to walk by my desk twice a day, which is nowhere near his. As he walks by, he stares at me like Hannibal Lecter would and makes an occasional remark about me like, burning the midnight oil, huh? And the like. The staring is so unnerving. My red flag went up and I had never even met him officially yet. I didn't know his name until way later after someone else told me. Last week, Twinkle Toes finally approached the desk while my coworker, who we'll call Amber, was there having a conversation with me. She and I share a workspace, and he went over to her side to be a part of the conversation with us, but he stared at me the whole time, never looking away, even when she spoke directly to him and he answered. Before I left, I made it very clear that I am married, and said, Well, I'm going home to my sick husband, and we'll make him some of that soup that we talked about. Then I walked out. Amber texted me shortly after, Twinkle Toes just asked if you are single. She also mentioned in the text that he's never stopped to talk to her in the two years that they've worked there. I brushed the text off as him spacing out, but the following week he walked past staring several times, and no one from his department does this. I also left a few minutes later than normal that day, and as I headed down, he was in the middle of my path with no one else around and just staring at me as I walked towards him. I said hi and waved. He said nothing back and wasn't moving out of the way. So before I ran into him, I turned to go back into the back offices. I waited a few minutes and then left through a different exit and took the long way to my car, looking over my shoulder to make sure that he didn't follow me. 
The next day was different, and I moved even further away to assist some employees temporarily. Twinkle Toes came to where I was and talked to the employees at my desk while staring at me, just as I walked around. I said hi and waved. You want to be nice and quiet, kid, just in case. But he just stared. When he finally left, the other employees say that he's never been to their area to talk, and they assumed that he was just there to watch me. I totally freaked out and asked my supervisor what to do. Apparently, he has a history of fixating on women and going too far on the awkward scale with them, but has never done anything to physically harm anyone. I also go on a walk around our property for my lunch, and everyone in the office that I work closely with knows this. He mentioned to the other employees at the different desk that he will go on a walk around the time that he thinks I take my lunches. She told me if I see him out there to not let him catch up to me. I spoke with my manager and requested a security escort me or watch me go to my car. My manager said that they'll have a discussion with him, but in the meantime, I need to just leave earlier and ask if Amber can go out with me to my car, but he gave me the number for security just in case. I told my husband, and he thinks that I'm making the right call with security, but I might need to be more aggressive towards Twinkle Toes at work. My coworkers think I need to be nice to him to keep it from getting worse. I've never had a conversation with this guy. I don't know anything about him except his tendency to stare, be in parts of the building where I'm at that are totally out of his way, and ignore everything I say. Part of me thinks he's just really harmless, socially awkward, and doesn't know how to handle his emotions. But he stares like he wants to do something evil and doesn't respond when I talk to him directly, which is so unnerving. How can I de-escalate the situation? I love my job, and I don't want to feel uneasy about where I am for eight hours of the day, but I don't want to be a nuisance for security or other employees either. Update. After all this happened and I spoke to my manager again, he stopped coming to my desk and following me to other areas, and has also stopped the staring if slash when I run into him elsewhere. He's on the spectrum as I have now found out, and the company is trying to work with him on his behavioral issues. I don't think that I was overreacting because I don't know him that well before, but now I have more information and it seems that he's moved on. I wish I didn't feel uncomfortable around him, because I think outside of his fixation on me that he's a nice person and means well. I'm taking the advice to be more assertive and standoffish, so I don't encourage anything inappropriate. And if he does walk past me, I don't wave or say hi. I'm not sure if I'm overreacting a little, but this was super creepy. This morning at about 3 a.m., my roommate and I, both young women, watched a man park at the end of our driveway and come up to our door. He was shining a flashlight around, looking up and down and all around our door. He then walked over to the neighboring house and got back in his car and drove away. We were absolutely terrified, and I'm trying to find any reasonable explanation other than a potential robbery or something worse. I believe that he saw our security camera and that's why he left, but I'm scared that he was just scoping it out and is going to come back. Just a strange encounter at a strange hour. This happened to me about two to three years ago. When I was 16, I used to work at a fast food restaurant, and I live in a place where we all have seasons. At this point in time, it was winter, so it got dark pretty early, around like 5 to 6 p.m. I was called to come into work this particular day, but the weather was kind of bad, causing us to not have any customers. As a result, we had to close the store early. It was about 5.30 p.m. when my manager left locking the store and making me wait outside for my ride. About 20 minutes had passed since she left and I was really cold, so I decided regrettably that I would walk to a friend's house just a few blocks away, about a 10-minute walk and wait for my ride there. 
The store I work at was on a busy street that was near a residential neighborhood. As I walk away from the store, I started walking down the residential street behind the store. I was walking on the sidewalk to the left of the street, as there was only one sidewalk on the right side of the street. If I walked on the right sidewalk, I'd only walk on it for a block, then I'd have to walk the rest of the way on the road. There were also woods on that side of the road. It was convenient as well, because on the left side of the street was my store, and there were no street lights. I walked about three quarters of the block when I got this feeling that I was being watched. The block was long, making it about the equivalent of two blocks. The neighborhood was really dark, and at this point I had pretty much reached the end of the block and was getting ready to cross the street when I noticed a silhouette of someone walking on the right side of the road near the woods. About five foot nine to five foot ten, looked maybe 180 to 200 pounds. I couldn't make out any features though. I'm the type of person who's very aware of their surroundings and slightly paranoid as I've been followed, almost kidnapped, stalked, etc. You get the gist. So when I noticed him, I stopped walking and immediately got a sick feeling in my stomach. The man then noticed me and proceeded to walk slowly and yell out to me. He says, yo, come here, I want to talk to you. I say back, no, I'm good, I'm only 16. Then I turned around and started walking back to my store. He continues to yell things at me, trying to convince me to come to him. At this point, something in me told me to run, and I did just that. As I'm running, I know I shouldn't have, but I turned my head to see if he was actually chasing me, and to my horror, he was. So I turned up the speed and ran as fast as I could. Thankfully, as I reached the store, my ride had pulled up, so I ran to the car. As I tried to get in, the door was locked. It took about 20 seconds for them to unlock the car, which felt like hours. But eventually I got in and just broke down crying. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of out of shape, so my back was hurting from breathing so hard, and I was all frazzled. This was the first time that I was chased on foot, and let me tell you, it's so much more scary, surreal, and intense being chased on foot than someone chasing you by car. Still to this day, I have added trauma from this incident, and it makes it hard to go anywhere by myself, especially in the dark. I'm a 25 year old female and I got my first apartment about a year ago. When I moved in, I was nervous, but excited about the opportunity. A few weeks after moving in, I bought a puppy so I wouldn't feel so lonely. My key broke in my door, so I had to call maintenance to come and fix it and let me into my apartment. The maintenance guy was instantly obsessed with my dog, but my dog was immediately afraid of him. I passed it off as nothing since she was a puppy and figured she might act that way around everyone new. A few weeks later, my dishwasher broke, so I called maintenance to come out again. I was working on crate training my dog, so I stated it was fine for them to come out while I was at work, since she would be in her crate, and at most might annoy them with mild barking. Upon arriving home from work, I found several places on my carpet where my dog had had an accident. I thought I must have missed it before I left for work, I took her outside to go for a walk, and the maintenance guy stopped me and informed me that he let my dog out while working on my dishwasher, informed me that I was starving her by keeping her locked up all day, and that I wasn't a good pet owner. He then stated that he could take better care of her. I was too shocked to say anything. I talked to my dog's vet, and the vet confirmed that I was doing everything right for crate training my puppy. For several weeks after this, the maintenance guy would always stop to attempt to pet my dog when he saw us. I started taking different routes for walks and began driving to a nearby park to avoid him. This was when I realized that my dog didn't react to any other stranger the way that she reacted to him, hiding behind me and aggressively barking. He also began making comments about my appearance. I mentioned the occurrences to my parents when they visited. My mom thought it might just be me overreacting to living alone for the first time. She walked my dog with me around the complex. 
the maintenance guy stopped again and proceeded to make a joke about stealing my dog. When we got home from the walk, my mom stated that we were going to buy video cameras for the apartment. After that, things seemed to calm down. When I had maintenance issues, a different guy would come out. My dog would still be uneasy, but wouldn't react aggressively. Today, I had a maintenance issue again, and the original maintenance guy came out. My dog again reacted aggressively. I held her to help her calm down, and she began to relax, but still remained on high alert. The maintenance guy mentioned that he noticed my family had recently visited, and then proceeded to ask if they had left. He then started asking me if I was in school or working. I responded by saying that I was working. He then asked how much money I make. I began feeling very uncomfortable and laughed it off by stating that I didn't remember. He wouldn't accept this answer and kept pestering me. I responded by saying that I was bad with numbers. I'm an accountant. He then kept pestering me about how many hours I work, etc. My dog then began barking aggressively at him until he left. I honestly feel so creeped out right now. My lease is almost up. I am moving to a different complex with a different management company, so I'm not sure if I should complain and risk them retaliating by holding my security deposit. I'm also nervous about filing a complaint and then living here for a few more weeks. I currently work the overnight shift for a major brand hotel. Like any other job I've had, most of the people I deal with are pretty normal and nice. Being the overnight shift, I get my fair share of weirdos too, of course. Although, most of the weirdos don't make me nervous, and I don't have to consider calling the police. If you have a working credit card and an ID and don't seem like you'll be a problem, I'll rent a room to you. All money is green, right? I'm only mentioning this to highlight that it's rare for me to turn people away when we have availability. Last night at 3 a.m., I swear they always come out in the witching hour. I had a walk-in guest who was an exception to both of these things. I saw this guy come in on the camera, so I went out to the front desk to greet him. Right away, I noticed he has the craziest eyes I've ever seen in my life. This guy was staring at me in a way that I cannot possibly describe. I swear he didn't even blink. He gave me that real bad, unmistakable initial gut feeling. As he approached with his crazy eyes, he said, Why are you so nervous? Why is everyone so nervous? What's going on? At that point, my guard is way up, but I was still willing to rent him a room. I said no one is nervous and asked him if he needed a room. I asked him for his ID and credit card and he hesitated in a way that made me think that he was going to pull a weapon out. Right away, I turned around and retreated to the back office and closed the door. I observed him and the camera for maybe a minute, and then decided to go out again. He hands me the ID and credit card, and as I'm putting in his reservation, he points at the table behind me and said, Who designed that? Instantly, I knew he just wanted me to turn around and look at the table, so I would turn my back to him. Without glancing away, I told him to leave, and he points at a cot badge in his wallet and said something like, Did you see this? Are you okay? Is everything okay here? Acting fake concern like I was possibly being victimized by someone else at the hotel. I assumed that the badge was fake, but didn't care either way and told him he had to leave. Side note, I noticed while he was standing there that he had urinated himself. Yup, this fat, old weirdo had a huge wet spot on his groin. My pants were dry. Guess he was more nervous than me, huh? I go into the back office again and watch him on camera. He walks out slowly, says something to our guest that was setting out in the lobby, and then kind of lingers in the parking lot for a minute. That's when I called the police because he had already made me so nervous. After he left the hotel, he went to the hotel across the street and drove through their lot. Then he looped around again and drove past our building real slow looking in. My guests and I were nervous and he suggested he might come back with a weapon. He waited for his DD in a separate location. 
Luckily, that's the climax of my story. The cops came within five minutes. They always come quick here. And he was arrested across the street for DUI. I got a bit of joy when I saw them putting his truck on the tow. Turns out, the guy is a retired chief of police, confirmed by me, after finding a couple of articles online linked to him. I told everyone at work to be on the lookout for him. Also, I forgot to mention that this weirdo called 911 on himself while I was on the phone with them. I was still on the line with dispatch at 911, was on the phone with the person at the station, and I heard someone say, someone from that area just called and said they were a retired cop who just scared some people at a hotel or something like that. This is the type of stuff we hear about on the countless murder documentaries on all of the streaming services. So this happened back around 2014 or 2015. I was about 19 to 20 years old. I was a scrawny thing at 4 foot 10. Not much weight or muscle to myself. We had just moved to this town. My family and I checked the crime rate. It was pretty low, and so we thought that it was a safe town. Boy, were we wrong. So this town was about a thousand people or so, and we just moved here a few weeks prior. Nothing bad had happened. One cold winter day, my parents decided to let me walk to the little store in town. It was about three blocks away, so like a five minute walk. I didn't personally own a cell phone at this time, nor did I have pants pockets on my pants. I took my parents' phone and card to get whatever we needed at the store. I had the card in my hand and it was visible. Bad mistake looking back on it. I walked up to the store without incident. Didn't see these boys on the way up to the store. Got what I needed and left the store pretty quickly, putting the card into the grocery bag. At this point, the sun was setting. It wasn't dark outside, but the sun was past the buildings in town. I get between the store and an abandoned building with a library, almost at the end of the block. I see three young boys, probably between middle to high school age. I knew I had to go that way to go home, so I was forced to walk past these boys. At first, I didn't have a bad feeling, and they weren't saying anything to me. I honestly don't think that they saw me at first. Anyway, as I was almost to the library, the boys pass me now. They're between the library and the store at this abandoned place. As soon as my back was to them, I got a very bad feeling. That's when I heard one of the boys say, you. Yeah, you. I looked back, and they were headed my way again. I just ignored them and didn't answer. I heard footsteps, but it was a distance away. Then I heard them say again, You. Yeah, you. Come here. Again, I ignored them. This time, the footsteps got louder and faster as they were jogging. One last time, they said to me, You. Yeah, you. Come here. But this time, louder and a lot more aggressive. At this point, the footsteps were at a run now and almost right behind me. I looked back and these three boys were almost on me, but not quite at arm's length. At this time, I got scared. I didn't have any weapons on me to defend myself. Nobody was on the road. I was all alone with these three boys. I didn't know what to do. So I gripped my parents' cell phone tighter, my other hand in a fist. I was ready to fight and use the phone as a weapon. As soon as these three boys were now within arm's length of me, an ambulance goes by. I remember looking at the guys in the ambulance. They were driving by really slow. They were looking at me, then looking at the three boys. I saw the passenger guy look at me and smile. Then they drove away. I looked back, and the three boys they had left and went away from me. I don't know why I didn't yell at the ambulance people for help. Maybe I was too shocked or scared. I called my family members, tell them what had happened, and asked if I could get a family member to come pick me up or meet up with me to finish walking me home. I don't remember what they said, but by the time the family member got out of the house, I was already home. Thankfully, they didn't follow me home either, but I was walking as fast as I could, gripping the phone tight, 
and constantly looking over my shoulders, thinking the whole time let me get home safe or let a family member catch up to me. Thankfully, I didn't see them again after this incident. To this day, I do believe that the ambulance men saved my life. I had a really bad feeling about these boys. I think that they were going to rob me or worse. Also, being in a new town, I didn't really know my way around. I honestly kind of just ignored my gut feeling. Because I could have crossed over onto the street, but I didn't. Now, I have good and better situational awareness. And I listen to my gut. It has never been wrong. My gut feeling has steered me in the right directions. This happened a while ago, back in late July slash early August of 2022, at around 9 o'clock p.m., I think maybe slightly earlier. Me and my friend decided to take photos in the forest. Yeah, I know, dumb idea. Everything was going fine. Of course, slightly scary, because, well, we're two girls in a forest and it's twilight. At around 9.40, my friend's mom calls her saying that we should go back to her place because it's getting late. Understandable. We are going to her place. I ask her, can we take the shortcut out of the forest? And she says, all right. Our biggest mistake. While going through the shortcut, I see some guy in front of us. He was holding an axe in one hand and was wearing a horse mask. He was around 195 centimeters tall. He was slowly coming towards us. I take my friend's hand because I'm thinking that we're all about to die. And I tell her, do not go there. There is a dude wearing a horse mask. She ignores me and continues walking towards him slowly. With no emotion, I take her hand and just force her to run to the longer exit from the forest. While running, I'm literally not hearing anything she's saying to me because I'm in a panic. While running, I see a random woman walking with two average sized dogs. Yeah. I know I'm dumb for not warning her about the horse dude. So we finally escape the forest and are going to her place. While walking to her place, she's asking me a bunch of questions like what was that and stuff like that. And she also mentions hearing that the guy was running after us. So yeah, we go to her place and talk about what happened. To be honest, I wish that was the end of it, but it wasn't. In October of 2022, I'm casually browsing the Latvian news and see some articles about a dead person in the same forest that me and my friend were. Did we escape an axe murderer by a dude wearing a horse mask? I was 23 and I had a long distance boyfriend. He would come and see me and on this day we parked outside of a nature trail and fooled around in the car briefly before I exited. None of the vehicles in the lot appeared to be occupied, but I was wrong. I'm about to get out of the car and decide to grab my knife out of the bag before I start walking the trail. I normally wouldn't do that. I also decided to put a bigger t-shirt over my tank top. I said goodbye to my boyfriend and started down the trail. I wanted to walk before going home. This isn't a hidden trail. This is a populated area. If you run about a minute down the road from the trail entrance, you're outside of a business. As I'm walking, I start to sense that someone is behind me. I'm currently holding my knife in front of my body. I continue walking and finally look back to see a middle-aged man following me. As I pick up speed, he does as well. I tell myself I'm being paranoid. It's the middle of the day. How would he even do anything to me? Because he continues to follow and I see a bench coming up, I decide the best thing I can do is to hurry to the bench that is facing the trail and hold my knife out in front of me in an obvious way. I cannot express to you how shocked I was to see. When I sat down and he saw my knife, he put an even larger knife into his pocket. I couldn't believe it. 
He saw the face I made, and he ran off immediately to an adjacent trail that was deeper into the wooded area. I got up and started running the main trail he had followed me down. When I got to the parking lot, there was one vehicle, a truck, running, with no one inside. I'm guessing this was his vehicle. I continued running until I was in the middle of town. I don't know what to make of this. Surely if he got me there, someone would have heard or seen it. Are people really that bold? I also think that he may have confused me for a worker, because he may have seen me in the car. Thoughts? This happened to me around 2021 in India, around the COVID period where lockdowns were still very much effective. My dad used to live in another city, my brother was in college, and my mom had a government job, so she had to go to her office every day. So I was basically left alone from 10 a.m. to around 6 p.m. We used to live in an apartment unit, but it had two doors. One was the main door and the other one was located in the biggest bedroom, basically my parents' room. The door was clearly locked with an actual lock from the outside, and it also had a metal sliding door, the one with the chain structure. I'm from India, so you can Google elevators to find out what I'm talking about. And it was also locked from the outside. We had a ring bell on the outside, but it was just connected to a small bulb in the bedroom. Sorry for this being so long, but you have to get the gist of the area. So one day around 12 p.m., I was in my room, which was basically adjacent to my parents' room, and I felt weird, so I just went to check their room. I went to the room to see the bulb blinking, i.e. someone was ringing the doorbell. My mom used to say to ignore it, because if it was someone we knew ringing it, they would know the real door. I stood there for a moment when the person started knocking really hard on the door, like it was straight up rattling. But the thing is, due to the metal gate in front of it, it would be very hard to put your hand inside to knock on the actual door. Even I couldn't put more than half of my palm in. I was also a teen back then, so I wasn't that big, and this man was straight up banging on it. I got scared and called my mom who told me not to panic, but I was really weirded out so I locked my parents' door with the lock that they had and went downstairs to chill in my brother's room. It was one of those days where my mom straight up wouldn't return till like 8 p.m., so I was alone for a really long time, and I was scared to even go upstairs. Around 6 p.m., our helper auntie came, and I was a little better than someone else was in the house. And during that time, I used to take private tuitions, and my teacher used to come around 7.30 p.m., so I felt better that I'd have people. Our main door had a big window just beside it, so whenever someone was at the door, we used to open the window to check who was there before opening it. But Auntie had the habit to open it without checking. Like, you memorize the timings of people, so you open it because you know that it'll be them kind of thing. Fortunately that day, when the doorbell rang, she opened the window, and then she came to my brother's room to tell me that I had a cake delivery. Thing was, I didn't, obviously. So I went out to check through the window. There was a man with a cap hiding his face holding a very small box. Now, a cake box is very square and big, right? Even a pound cake has a big box. And in India, we have a very small sweet box. So imagine a 100 gram sweet box being called a cake box. And I asked him who was the delivery for. He didn't give my name, not even of the company, just told me that it was for our flat. I called my mom and asked if she had made the delivery and she didn't know what I was talking about. So the dude was just like, accept the box and open the door. And by a miracle, my teacher walked up the stairs and asked what was happening. The dude saw my teacher and ran up the stairs. We lived on the first floor, and we let our teacher enter. Later, when my mom inquired about a delivery guy coming to our flat with our security guard, he said he wasn't there at his post for around a half an hour when it happened, and we didn't have any CCTVs in our building, so no one saw him. It wasn't that scary, maybe, 
but it did shake me up. And I did ask my mom to at least come quickly from her office on the next day. And I didn't stay upstairs when I was home alone anymore. Thank you so much for listening to all of the stories in this video. I hope you enjoyed them. I also hope that you enjoy the extra rain at the end. Get a good night's sleep, everyone. And I'll read to you in the next video. Bye-bye now.